inches. <laughs> so it is prepare for the worst is going to be the watchword from now on. I have to say, our city workers did an outstanding job. I want to thank the sanitation department, obviously all our first responders. You're going around now in the city, you'll see a lot of areas where they've already done a great job clearing, particularly the highways. Mm -hmm. We also have some problem areas we're going to have to do a lot of work on today. And New Yorkers did heed the travel ban. Now, that was very important, and I, I, we, we made very clear there would be consequences, and people took us seriously, and that allowed us to get out and really deal with the roads the way we needed to. If we had had a lot of stuck vehicles, sanitation would not have been able to get those plows through. Because you heard one citation. Yeah, a and taxi you know, driver in Harlem. <laughs> that listen, was it. and Chief, uh, Chief Jimmy O'Neill and I, when we announced it, we said, NYPD does not want to have to arrest people, but if you don't get out of the way, we will, and people got out of the way. Mm -hmm. School tomorrow, and what's yes. coming up with this news conference at 11 o'clock this morning? We're going to go over the state of play. As I said, a lot of areas of city uh, snow, uh, plowing has gone very well. There's some areas, particularly in Queens, where we have a lot more work to do, so we're going to be playing some catch-up. Uh, we're moving some assets out to Queens to deal with that situation. Uh, we're going to remind people it's still not, you know, the safest environment. Don't walk in the streets, mm -hmm. which a lot of people do. Don't shovel out your car and then put all the snow in the middle of the street because then you're just going to create another problem for the snow plows. Unfortunately, people have to be smart about putting the snow off to the side. Alternate side canceled Monday. We're going to we're going to cancel it for Tuesday as well, so people can, in many cases, leave their car be, let the snow plows do their work. Confidence that schools will be open tomorrow. Yes. Okay, yes. So we're okay on that part. Yeah, we're looking good. And, and overall, you're pleased with the cleanup. There, besides that, in one area, Queens, we're okay. Let me tell you, our sanitation workers deserve so much praise. They had to go nonstop, but before the snow hit. We had over 500 salt spreaders out when the snow finally started to hit in earnest. 1,800 snow plows swung into action. And it's amazing how they, this was a very fast moving storm. At some point we were getting three inches of snow in an hour, but they managed to stay ahead of it. And you had to make the decision to shut down this, this city. Yeah. Shut down this city. How yep. difficult was that and how fast did you have to make that decision? Uh, yesterday morning, when I woke up, it did not look like it would be necessary. By the 11 a.m. weather service report, those numbers kept jumping up, and it became clear we were dealing with a whole different reality. So it's not a simple decision. It's not one you do lightly, but it was necessary. And by the way, you can see from the results, had we not done that, a lot of the roads of the city would be in a lot worse shape right now. Well, people who remember last January when we had a similar shutdown, or at yeah. least this time, we had the snow to justify well, the shutdown. Yeah. exactly right. Yeah. This is the snowfall that was projected last time. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so we're seeing exactly what we would have gotten. By the way, right. Boston and other places did get it that right. time. Sure. So I think the, the fact is, you know, snow, weather projections, of course, aren't perfect. We can't ask our meteorologists to get everything exactly right. It is a model for us to work with. But we're going to be cautious when we get those models, assume that the storms could show up earlier, mm -hmm. assume they could be bigger, in some cases much bigger. But the blessing in this city, I feel bad for Washington and other places that aren't as used to dealing with the snow. We know what to do with snow, and we know how to go at it. We're going to make sure in the future just the assets are in place for a much bigger storm even than projected, and that's how we'll keep people safe. Before we let you go, yes. what do you think of the possibility of former Mayor Bloomberg running for president? Look, I respect my predecessor, and there were some things he did I think were great for this city. But first, I have two things I'd say. First of all, Hillary Clinton is my candidate, and she is definitely going to be the next president of the United States. I believe that in my heart. The second thing I'd say is look at what people are talking about all over the country. They're very frustrated about what's happened to the middle class, income inequality, the fact that people are struggling economically. Uh, I don't think the people of this country want to give more power to a billionaire. You know, I don't think that's where people are thinking right now. Let's, let's uh, have the rich solve our problems. I think at this point people are looking for a leader who can actually create a more fair economy and tax the wealthy more, and that's what Hillary Clinton's going to do. We talked yeah. about it a lot this morning. Got Thanks the snow and the politics. That's it. We got the whole thing. We, we got it all covered. Thank, Thank you. Our Thank New you. York values at play. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> when we come back, we'll take it with meteorologist Amy Freeze, the latest snow totals and the AccuWeather forecast. Its sleek design is mold breaking. Its intelligent drive systems, paradigm shifting. Its technology-filled cabin, jaw-dropping. Its performance, breathtaking. Its self-breaking, show-stopping. The all-new GLC. Mercedes-Benz resets the bar for the luxury SUV. Starting at 38,950. I'm Carrie D. I've had moderate to severe plaque psoriasis most of my life. 
But that hasn't stopped me from modeling. My doctor told me about Stellara. It helps keep my skin clearer. With only four doses a year, after two starter doses, Stellara helps me be in season. Stellara may lower your ability to fight infections and increase your risk of infections. Some serious infections require hospitalization. Before starting Stellara, your doctor should test for tuberculosis. Stellara may increase your risk of cancer. Always tell your doctor if you have any sign of infection, have had cancer, or if you develop any new skin growths. Do not take Stellara if you are allergic to Stellara or any of its ingredients. Alert your doctor of new or worsening problems, including headaches, seizures, confusion, and vision problems. These may be signs of a rare, potentially fatal brain condition. Serious allergic reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you or anyone in your house needs or has recently received a vaccine. In a medical study, most Stellara patients saw at least 75% clearer skin, and the majority were rated as cleared or minimal at 12 weeks. Stellara helps keep my skin clearer. Ask your doctor about Stellara. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. This winter, give snow and ice a swift kick to the curb in a Dodge with all-wheel drive. Well-qualified lessees of competitive vehicles get a low-mileage lease on the 2016 Journey SXT all-wheel drive for $199 a month. All right, airlines are getting back up to speed this morning, but some travelers may still run into some pretty big problems. Reagan National Airport and Dulles International are shut down today. At last check, there are 3,600 flight cancellations that are listed on Flight Aware. The East Coast backups are causing a ripple effect into the work week. More than 600 flights have already been canceled for tomorrow, and that number is expected to rise. Please check with your carrier. Make sure you uh, stay in touch with people who might be coming in. I think the number, total number of canceled flights due to this storm, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000. So it's, uh, it has impacted when the Northeast is in trouble. It affects right? every, all the hubs everywhere all else the in hubs. the country. Amy Freeze, second biggest snowstorm. You know, we were talking about war record warmth, November, December, 70, right. Christmas Eve. Now the second biggest snowstorm now this. in NYC history. Right, right. I mean, when we saw this on long-term models a week ago, we were sitting here going, oh, we might have our first measurable snow. That's right. We might That's get right. in the game of winter next weekend. And as the week progressed, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And not only that, when the storm actually arrived, it took the ideal track to tap into all the cold air. So the moisture uh, certainly was converted quite easily. And wow. What a storm. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, that it turned out big, but it was in a short amount of time, especially when we measure it up against big time snowfalls. Uh, all the snow came pretty much in less than 24 hours. All right, let's get you up to speed on what's happening right now because there is a lot of snow to contend with. In Central Park right now, 20 degrees. It's a cold start out there. We'll be below freezing all day. North winds at 8 miles an hour, gusting to 17 miles an hour. Our normal high this time of year is 38. We're going to push towards the upper 30s here in the coming days. That will help with the uh, meltdown. But going out to clean up the snow, Make sure you're bundled up, ready for the cold conditions despite all the sunshine. Here are the top snowstorms of all time for New York City. We fell short of the top spot by 0.1 inches. That's right, just a tenth of an inch, and we would have been uh, the number one snowstorm of all time. This was a big blizzard, but I uh, guess we'll have to settle for second best. Did beat out February 2010 and uh, the big anniversary of January 1996, where we just had 20 inches of snow, but that was a huge storm. So radar and satellite picture behind the storm is beautiful sky conditions and a northerly wind. This will keep us chilly for the next couple of days, but it also allows the temperatures to gradually rise. So a bit of a wind mixed with uh, temperatures rising really is a good recipe for melting snow. So we watch the future cast and really not a lot happening over today and tomorrow. Clouds will come and go, but not a big deal. And even into Monday night, just a wave of clouds passing through. Then by Tuesday, there'll be another storm here waiting in the wings. This one coming from the north and west. It looks to take a track just to the south of us and perhaps that one will be a little bit of rain which will help wash away more of the snow in Central Park sunshine and then temperatures in the 30s. I think we'll top off right at 33 degrees for the high temperature. Tonight, slick roads in 21, below freezing everywhere. So anything that does melt or that's wet will refreeze overnight and that'll make for slippery travel conditions and you want to be careful even outside your own front door. Sometimes it gets a little tricky. All right, we do have plenty of snow coverage here across the country now and we're included in that more snow right now than places like Chicago and this entire purple stretch here more than 20 inches of snow so we're in the same boat of course 
as D.C. and Philadelphia are getting a lot of snow as well. Uh, the sun is melting everything today, so we watched the storm yesterday. We're like, wow, that's a lot of snow. This is E.J. up in the Bronx. And, you know, once you look at the snow, then you think I'm going to get out and help is exactly what he did. Really cute pictures coming in via Twitter. So you can just hashtag us, abc7ny.com. Here's another picture um, that's been coming, that came into us that shows um, just how um, everybody was trying to get out and about and work on their own areas, but we had so many service people helping us as well. So this was Michelle's favorite picture of the storm. And of course, it's uh, NYPD and Port Authority getting out there to serve. Some great tweets came in, a lot of cool Instagram pictures posted of the snow itself. And also on Facebook, we not only got pictures, but also video, which was fun to enjoy. If you want to relive some moments of the storm, our very own Lauren Glassberg was out in it yesterday. And there's a lot of Facebook Live clips you can go were great. and check out and uh, see the conditions during the heart of the storm, what it was like uh, here great. on the Upper West Side. Nobody really. wants to relive it. But, uh, you could, <laughs> but yeah, check it out. <laughs> I <laughs> love the picture, though. Wasn't it fun to so see pretty. everybody? And really today nice. they'll be sliding like crazy down the hills and really? wearing their snowshoes in Central Park. Seeing kids out in the snow kind of is it's, the cool part. You know, as adults, great. we lose all the, oh, it's I'm so fun. Oh, it's we great. lose that. I'm so the kids, are, it's cool today. for them. I'm definitely sledding today. Very nice. Thank you, Amy. Rob. Our coverage after the blizzard continues this morning. We have received uh, tons of great yeah. photos of uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram from <laughs> Iowa News viewers just like you. Please keep them coming in. Use the hashtag ABC7NY. Life's got a week of red hot stars. Oh, God, I'm starting to sweat now. Oh, yeah. Next live Golden Globe winner and Mr. Robot star Christian Slater. But can he do the robot? Yes, he's Mr. Robot. Plus, from Blind Spot, Sullivan Stapleton and Live's Inbox. My chicken Charlotte loves watching your show. Next live. It works on chickens, everybody. <laughs> Watch live. Tomorrow morning at 9 on ABC7. Honda knows that being adaptable has its advantages. That's why the fit lets you do more throughout your day. Gives you a better view of your surroundings. And helps you stay in touch on the go. The Fit, from KBB.com's best value brand. Nothing compares to a Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today. Our cosmetics line was a hit. The orders were rushing in. I could feel our deadlines racing towards us. We didn't need a loan. We needed short-term funding, fast. Building 18 homes in four and a half months, that was a leap. But I knew I could rely on American Express to help me buy those building materials. Amex helped me buy the inventory I needed. Our Amex helped us fill the orders, just like that. Another step on the journey. Will you be ready when growth presents itself? Realize your buying power at open.com. The Common Core rollout was a disaster. Parents knew it, teachers knew it. And now, Governor Cuomo's task force is doing what's right. State tests don't unfairly count against students, and test scores won't be used in teacher evaluations. Less testing, greater focus on learning. That's a start, but there's more to do. Let's work together to support sensible and fair learning standards that help every child in every neighborhood succeed. Welcome back, everybody, to Eyewitness News. Looking at a live picture there of Central Park. That's where we take the official snow totals after a storm and the number this morning from yesterday's blizzard, 26.8 inches of snow. This is officially the second largest snowstorm in the history of New York, which means it's a big cleanup today on this Sunday, January 24th. Thanks for being with us. I'm Rob Nelson. And I'm Michelle Charlesworth. As things get back to normal this morning, following the historic storm, the travel ban remains in effect for Newark, New Jersey. It's a, it was supposed to be lifted at 7 a.m., but it has been extended until further notice due to some vehicles that are in the way of cleaning crews there. Indeed. Newark. New Jersey. Newark. That's all, just Newark. Different story, though, here in New York City. The New York City travel ban officially lifted as we speak. It went into effect yesterday at 2.30 in the afternoon. This is now a live look at Times Square. Thanks to the good folks at EarthCam for that shot. The Port Authority bridges and tunnels closed down as a precaution are also reopened to traffic. This is a live look at the George Washington Bridge, the Lincoln and <laughs> Holland Tunnels, also open for business. Airlines. 
Meantime, we're getting back up to speed this morning, but some travelers may still run into problems up and down the East Coast. Again, this storm much bigger than New York. This was up and down the coast. Live look now at Newark Liberty. Our three major airports are open. Reagan National Airport and Dulles International are shut down today, though. At last check, there are more than 3,600 flight cancellations listed on Flight Aware for today. The East Coast backups will cause a ripple effect into the work week. 650 flights have already been canceled for tomorrow. Tomorrow, that number expected to go up. You are advised to check your individual carrier. We have a team of reporters spread out across the tri-state to show you the conditions as cleanup begins following this historic blizzard. But we begin with meteorologist Amy Freeze with new snow totals received overnight. Amy, good morning. Michelle and Rob, what a huge amount of snow for us to handle. And as the skies are sunny this morning, a lot of people are going to want to get out in it and start cleaning it up. Know that it's very cold outside despite the sunshine. Feels like just 12 degrees. And we're going to have wind chill factors in the teens and low 20s. The breeze will pick up at a time. So be aware of that as you get out in it. Here are the numbers that really are the storm totals official numbers coming in from the National Weather Service. White House, New Jersey, top number 29.6 inches. Newark, 28.1 inches. Somerville, 27.4, over two feet in many spots across New Jersey. And then we go to New York with top number coming from Staten Island, Port Richmond. 31.1 inches. JFK, 30 inches. Hicksville, 29.6. Williamsburg, 29. Belmonts. And by the way, Central Park, that 26.8, comes in second in the all-time snowiest storms we've ever seen here in New York City. And it finishes second by only a tenth of an inch. That's right. 0.1 shy of being the number one. Greenwich, 16 inches for you in Norwalk, Fairfield, 13.5. Wilton, 13 and New Canaan, and also Shelton over a foot of snow. Lot of cleanup underway. No weather to slow you down, just that northerly breeze and that wind along with the warmer temperatures in the coming days will help to make for a gradual, a gradual melting process. Oh, the next seven hours we're below freezing and sunshine gives way to a few clouds around here. All of your AccuWeather seven day forecast until just a few minutes. Michelle? Right. Amy, thank you so much. Everyone is digging out from this winter wallet from New Jersey. We head east uh, to the five boroughs. We begin our live team coverage with Eyewitness News reporter Marcus Solis. He is live for us in Williamsburg. Hey, Marcus. Morning. And Robin and Michelle, as the morning progresses, you can see that now there is some progress being made in shoveling out some of the sidewalks here. Uh, down on the corner, they're shoveling. Uh, I got to this, and I did all this uh, just a short time ago. Not really, I'm kidding. Uh, but the, the store owner did. But it's inconsistent, and this is what we mean. Like, you just walk a few more steps, and you can see that the uh, sidewalk is still pretty snow-covered, and that is why a lot of people continue to walk out on the street. Now, uh, Williamsburg d definitely got... 29 inches of snow, second most in the city. In Port Richmond, Staten Island, they got 31 inches of snow, and shoveling is going to be the order of the day. That's pretty light. A little ice build up on the bottom where people walk, but otherwise, uh, pretty good. Uh, more than you expected? More than I, more than uh, I expected. Yes, especially in the front here. But now, again, you see people still opting for the street as the better option. I mean, it's not really the better option because there are cars coming by. This is Bedford Avenue, but they are in generally better shape down to the blacktop, in better shape than the sidewalks. The dig out, the cleanup continues here in Williamsburg. Back to you guys. All right, Marcus, thank you so much. Flooding has been a big issue at the Jersey Shore. There are also about 3,500 power outages in New Jersey, mostly along the shore. New Jersey reached up to 100,000 customers without power yesterday. Again, that number really coming down. I have a news reporter, Tony Yates, live for us in Briel. Morning, Tony. Good morning. And, you know, uh, Manasquan officials tweeted out uh, a message from the OEM. They uh, want people to stay off of those flooded roads until the tides recede, until their public works crews uh, can get out there and clean those roads up a bit. We saw a couple of cars trying to go through some of those waters, but they're saying, please just stay off those roads. Uh, let that tide recede now. This is video from just about an hour ago. The water from the bay rose really fast under that full moon, uh, just like it did last night at high tide. Uh, when firefighters were out on Briol Road and uh, uh, water rescue was out there too, they went in to check on the people who didn't evacuate it. And then check out this video from Beach Haven in Ocean County where uh, last night the volunteer fire headquarters was flooded during high tide, <laughs> soaked up their equipment, more than a foot of water it looks like, flooding, hitting lots of low-lying areas along the coast. Well, today is dig-out day. Huge, uh, bright mounds of snow that have to get 
moved so that we can all get moved. You got a lot of work ahead of you this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of work. Were you expecting this much? Uh, pretty much, yeah. They, they're pretty a bit, pretty accurate these days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's worth our time. Uh-huh, and it's just beginning. You can see one other guy down there. He's starting to shovel out his driveway. The people behind me are shoveling. The people next door to them are shoveling. Uh, this is when you're going to meet your neighbors once again uh, after the storm to say, hey, what you guys do? Uh, because it's time to get out and try to help each other shovel because we got the shovels going a lot over here. Got to get those driveways cleared. Got to get those cars out and get moving again. But now we're live here in Brielle, Tony Yates, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Back to you guys. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you, Tony. Well, let's head east now to Long Island and the Nassau County community of Hicksville. They got a lot. Yes. The, st the storm dumped nearly 30 inches of snow there. Eyewitness News reporter Kristen Thorne is live with the cleanup. Good morning to you again, Kristen. Good morning, yeah, to you guys. 29.6 inches, really incredible. That's actually uh, the highest snowfall across Long Island. And actually, it looks like Nassau County really got hit uh, primarily with the storm, not so much Suffolk County. I can try to attempt to show you a little bit of 106, 107 here, but you see we're behind the snowbank. That really is to protect us because, uh, as you can see, actually, if you go to your left, you see this guy trying to walk down the uh, the road. This is the problem, people trying to walk to work, uh, get on buses. Uh, it's just going to be very problematic throughout the day because there's just uh, nowhere to walk. Uh, people have been tweeting me, asking me, what's what's going on with the LIRR? Well, the LIRR is not running and there is no timetable for it to return. So we are starting to think about the commute tomorrow, uh, about school tomorrow. There could be some school closures. So where do you want to stay tu tuned to? That's to us here at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. I can show you some video we got this morning uh, being around Hicksville. Uh, the plows are out, definitely. People are waking up. The travel ban is now lifted uh, at 7 o'clock this morning so people are definitely out it's certainly not as many people as you would see on a typical Sunday morning and that's a good thing uh, the roads are still pretty dangerous I mean there's the plows are still doing what they need to do the back roads uh, really are not very good either um, so definitely something to keep an eye out on as you head out today the back roads are definitely a mess uh, the LIE the parkways look beautiful if you do have to head out I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised uh, about that for now we're live in Hicksville I'm Kristen Thorne Channel 7 Eyewitness News Kristen, thank you so much for reminding us about this as well. Fire hydrants, make sure you dig those out and remind your uh, neighbors to do the same thing. We will get an update later this morning on where things stand in New York and New Jersey. Governor Cuomo is planning a news conference in just a few moments at 945, followed by Governor Christie. He'll talk at 10 a.m. and the mayor, who we just heard from a few minutes ago, will have his formal press conference at 11 a.m. And uh, we heard from the mayor a few minutes ago. He said the cleanup was going well, except for a few spots in Queens. They say they are on top of that situation. Again, just check out all of our social media pages at ABC7NY for the very latest on the storm and now the cleanup. Up. And the mayor saying there will be school tomorrow. Coming up on Eyewitness News, Sunday morning, we continue our coverage of this historic blizzard that hit the tri-state. This is a live look for you from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And, of course, we would love to see your pictures and your videos from the big storm. This is a look at some of the thousands of pictures we've received so far. You can send us your pictures and video. Again, use the hashtag ABC7NY. What's bigger than Powerball with odds in your favor? 14 billion bucks in unclaimed cash. Some of it could be yours. Tomorrow at 11, Eyewitness News shows you how to get your hands on free money. The secret to getting the cold, hard cash you deserve. Tomorrow on Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. I need to collect your phone so you can't post pictures. How does it feel to not be connected? My chest hurts. Let me show you a better way to keep connected. The 2016 Chevy Cruze offers built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi that connects up to seven devices. Current qualified competitive lessees can get a sign-and-drive lease on this well-equipped Chevy Cruze Limited for around $148 per month. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Let's start the conversation. One in five New Yorkers have mental health problems. If we talk and listen, we can become a healthier city. Let's start the conversation about mental health. Learn more at nyc.gov slash mental health. There's a place far from winter's chill where you can wrap up in hugs, not coats, where you trade your fleece for flamingos and your mittens for mouse ears. All of these heartwarming moments are closer than you think, especially when you have a chance to win a sunny vacation to Kissimmee, Florida. 
where theme parks, sun, fun, and warm family memories are waiting. Text SUNNY to 313131 for your chance to win. Escape the cold, warm your heart. This is Monster Jam, and there's no holding back. See Gravedigger, Carolina Crusher, and more. Coming to Prudential Center for the first time ever this weekend. Buy your tickets now at monsterjam.com. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Alexis? ABC7 and your Tri-State Ford dealers thank you for helping protect our children. We continue our coverage of this historic blizzard with a live look from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. We have a team of reporters across the area all morning helping you with your morning commute if you have to get around. Plans for the week and plans in place for the big cleanup ahead. Indeed, from down the shore to communities right over the Hudson River. Thousands of folks have lots of work ahead over the next few days. I want to see reporter Dre Clark is live for us again out of Hoboken with the latest on what is going on there. Hi, Dre. Yeah, good morning, guys. 26 inches is the magic number here in Hoboken. And so far this morning, folks seem to be dealing with it pretty well. Uh, we're starting to see more and more people out walking. And uh, we're outside the uh, bus terminal here in the PATH station. And we're noticing a lot of people catching the train here. Uh, the bus is, <coughs> excuse me, the bus is still on running. Uh, but for the most part, people are telling us they're having no problems getting around, especially on the streets here. You can see this is Hudson Place and River Street. And they declared a state of emergency here in Hoboken early yesterday morning, and that allowed their city workers to get right down to the business of clearing up these streets all night long. You can see there's still snow cover, but you can see uh, the blacktop there. That's a good thing. They're still working on those secondary roads, uh, but for the most part, this is what you'll find when you're driving down the main arteries here throughout uh, Hoboken. Meanwhile, take a look at some of the people walking around this morning. Cabin fever kicking in. So at first light, folks were anxious to get out there. We've seen people uh, shoveling. We've seen people snow blowing. Even a couple of people jogging here throughout the city. Uh, but the number one complaint for some people is uh, the sidewalks still aren't clear. They're asking business owners to get out there and some of these uh, uh, building owners to get out there and make sure they shovel the sidewalks because people are having some difficulty uh, walking up and down the street. In fact, we talked to a couple of people earlier this morning uh, who said, listen, somebody's got to get out here and do more because if not, you're going to start hearing about more people slipping and falling on some of these sidewalks. Things are uh, pretty clear on the roads. The sidewalks are still kind of trashed, but I think that'll all be cleared up by the end of the day. Uh, it's pretty much what I expected. Yeah, I mean, I was you know, seeing that and bikes all covered and cars completely covered. Yeah, it was definitely a two-foot snowstorm. Yeah, cars covered, vans covered, like this one you see right here, covered from bumper to bumper here. Uh, whomever's truck this is or van this is, they're going to have quite a time digging this thing out because it's obviously been there for quite some time. And there in front of the van, you can see that gentleman uh, with his shovel. In fact, up and down the block here where we're located, we've seen quite a few people doing shoveling as well. And again, outside the path station, you can see a clear indication that the trains are running. we got a couple of folks leaving uh, the train station right now. So all in all, again, people getting around quite well here in Hoboken, but you still have to be careful. Uh, take your time because even though the streets are clear, you still have to watch out for slippery spots both on the street and on the sidewalk. I just uh, had a chance to talk to a police officer right before you guys came to me and I said, hey, how's the look out there? He said, you know what? Things are going well, but he urges people to, one, slow down when they're driving. You still have to slow down and take your time uh, and to also uh, still give those city crews room to do what they have to do because even though they've done a good job, they still, in a sense, have a long way uh, to go. For now, we're live this morning in Hoboken. Dre Clark, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. All right, Dre, thank you very much. Hoboken is... Parking in Hoboken is never easy. It's not easy. <laughs> At least I got a spot. It, it, it was That's beautiful. What we were it could be 70 and sunny. It's, it's, it's going to be a lot of digging <laughs> out, but matter. that one guy with the minivan got a spot. So it'll be a lot of work, but there was a parking spot. And sports fans, we just did yeah. get word that uh, the Nets game delayed till 7.30 tonight. So if you're planning on to go to the Nets game, and uh, 7.30. Let's go to Governor, uh, New York Governor Cuomo, who is having a news conference at this hour to uh, let every no everyone Good know morning, what is going everyone. on. Everyone. Um, we're here to give you an update on the current storm situation, and hopefully it is the uh, last update that we will give you on the storm situation. Uh, let me introduce who we have at the table, starting at my right. Audrey Zibelman, who's the commissioner of the Public Service Commission. Jim Malatris, who's the director of state operations. Joseph Giulietti, who is the president of the Metro North Railroad. 
Major General Patrick Murphy, who's been running the National Guard, Ronnie Hakem, uh, who's immediately to my right, who is the president of the MTA New York City Transit uh, uh, Department, Patrick Foy to my left, who is the executive director of the Port Authority, Patricia 